What do you do if, having filed your personal tax return, you find yourself in a situation you just don't have the funds to pay what's due? What do you do? Well, in this week's I Hate Numbers video, having completed all the personal tax returns for our clients, I can give you some thoughts and share some tips about what you need to do if you find, having done task one and filed your tax return, you are unable to pay HMRC by the due date. Hi folks, my name is Mahmood. I'm a business finance fixer, accountant and author of the book, I Hate Numbers and firm of the same name. I'm here to help you and your businesses make more money, increase the financial awareness and the battle that goes on between your ears, reduce your stress and anxiety and reduce your tax exposure. What's not to love about that? Let's crack on with the video. Now, task one, in terms of the tax return process in the United Kingdom, other jurisdictions around the world will follow similar patterns, is to actually file that tax return. For those of you watching this video, the due date for the 22-23 personal tax return is the 31st of January, 2024. 11.59, if you want to be more precise. Now, having filed that tax return, not being one of the 660,000 people who don't file on time, you'll get the figure for your tax and that figure for your tax would have been obtained once you filed it or maybe you've got your accountant to file it on your behalf and you've been presented with that news. Now, if for any reason you don't have the funds put aside, what must you do? Now, first of all, do not panic. Do not get stressed out over this. Easy for me to say you might be thinking, but the getting stressed, getting anxious is not going to advance your cause one bit and it's just going to make you feel very ill, very peculiar and not even killed and you don't want that for you now the second thing you've got to think about is how do you then arrange that conversation that time to pay arrangement with hmrc now if you've been in that situation that you filed your return more than 60 days ago before the filing deadline you've got no issues with outstanding returns previous tax arrangements made then you can actually make a payment arrangement online if that opportunity has passed you by think about it readiness for next year perhaps now, if that opportunity has been taken away from you, then again, before you even pick up the phone, before you even communicate with HMRC, there's a few things you need to bear in mind. The people who collect the tax on behalf of HMRC, the debt collection agencies, will either be people who work directly for HMRC, or they'll be one of the many debt collection agencies who operate under the umbrella of HMRC. The people who assess the tax are not the same people, not the same people, the personnel, who will be collecting that money from you. So think of that as two completely sets of people, both with different objectives, both with different briefs, and both with different challenges in front of them. Have some empathy for the tax collector. So HMRC have got a bad rap. There are a mixture of personalities you'll get when you ring them up. Some will feel very rude, some are very polite, but you need to put yourself in their shoes to understand the process. Now, before you pick up that call, have some idea of what's called affordability. So what is it you think with your tax debt in front of you? And typically that tax debt will be made up of how much you owe for the year that it's gone, plus what's called payments on accounts. More of that later on in the video. So with your tax bill in front of you, think about what's going on in your life, in your business, in your personal life, and don't do some form of cash flow. Cash flow and budgeting is always an essential task to do, irrespective of what the circumstances are, and this is going to really help you. Figure out what your affordability is. So what's the money that's likely to come into your business, your household? The personal tax obviously is a personal debt. So think about the cash flows. What do you have left over after you pay for those essential items? Those questions that you'll be asking yourselves, that forecast you'll be doing, will be the same procedure HMRC will ask of you. They'll want to know what your affordability is. From their perspective, just like any form of supplier, they will want to get the bulk of that money from you as quickly as possible. They will, by default, typically go for at least six months. If they know that you have a situation where you can't pay immediately, they want to know what have you done to try and raise that money. You can typically go for an arrangement up to at least six months here, and you can stretch that up to a year. And there are some rare circumstances I've been involved in where we've managed to get a payment arrangement that extends beyond 12 months. It's unusual but it's not out of the question. A lot will depend on your circumstances. So if you've been self-employed, your circumstances are changing and going into the world of work, so you're not liable to file another self-assessment tax return, 
then obviously they are going to look more favourably because the debts won't compound. Remember, that arrangement should be made by the 28th of February 2024. If you don't, and you don't have any communication with HMRC by that due date, then you will be levied, or they reserve the right, to impose a 5% penalty surcharge for non-payment there itself. That's a 5% flat fee, by the way, not a per annum cost. If you don't communicate with HMRC, by the way, you will be subject to late filing penalties in respect of the missing payments. So it's critical you must contact HMRC, frustrating though it may be to wait on the phone and everything else, to get through and make that payment arrangement. Bear in mind, they're going to be very rushed. Lots of people are going to be doing the same thing. So be patient. The opening hours and the phone number, I'll give as a link in the show notes in the video. So have a look at that. Ring them first thing in the morning. You can ring them in the evening as well. But make that arrangement and you must make that arrangement. Now, let me just address the issue of payments and account and other options available to us. Now, your tax bill typically, if it's over a thousand pounds, you will automatically trigger what's payments on account, which says, if you owe us more than a thousand pound that's not being collected at source, we want at least half of that money coming up front go towards next year's tax bill. Payments on account, of which we've got a previous video, so please do check that out as well, is going towards your future tax bill. When it comes to the payments on account, you have the opportunity, once your 22-23 return has been filed, to make an amendment. And you've got until 31st of January 25 to do so. My suggestion would be wait until at least perhaps the 5th of April. So you've got a complete actual year that's gone by. So you've got a, an idea with certainty what's going on. Get your tax return filed early. We always encourage our clients to get their tax returns in early. You'll know what your liability is and you'll know also then what your actual payments on account are. If it's more immediate than that, then you can obviously make an estimate and you can change that estimate as time goes on. It's important to remember folks, by the way, that if you don't make those arrangements, okay, HMRC automatically will charge interest on the underpaid tax and at the current rate of 7.75%, that's the time to tightly squeeze your vitals, shall we say, and that could be quite painful. Other things to do, make sure you've actually reviewed and captured all the expenses that you needed to. So you have the right to go back at least four tax years to review what you've submitted previously, including the 22-23 tax return. So there may be claims that you've not yet made. There may be any expenses you've incurred that you've not put through. So you have the option also, as long as you've got the evidence to back it up somehow, to revise your tax return for 22-23. So in summation, don't panic. Review the return that's got in, making sure that you're comfortable with what's being claimed for. If in doubt, contact uh, an accountant, uh, somebody who's competent and experienced. Uh, contact details are in the show notes as well. If it's not us, go back, make sure you claim everything you're entitled to. If you've got payments on account and you feel that actually your income situation is likely to change for 23, 24, then you can review that and amend it. So once you submit your return, it's not the definitive, that's it, nothing can change. So folks, I hope you found this useful. Uh, and as a sort of one further thought by that going forward, we recommend to all our clients, if you've got income that's not being taxed on source, I'd highly recommend to put a percentage away in a, a separate tax account. At least you've taken care of that as you've got along, and then that money will be there for your future tax payments. Typically, for every £100 that you invoice a client, money that you collect, put a percentage away. If you've got, re look at your accounts that have gone in, and you can work out percentages. As a rule of thumb, typically I would say anything between 15 to 25% is what you should be putting away. That might be too much or too little, but at least you've got most of the money potentially saved for it. If you have saved too much, then you've got an interest that you're earning on that deposit that you've made. And also you've got that sense of comfort and potential smugness that you don't have to stress out of your tax bill. I hope you found that useful folks. And if you have, I'd love it if you could share it with those who you feel will benefit. Until next time, keep that stress level down and make sure you get that tax situation sorted.